Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to show you how we can use K-Min clustering algorithm to do customer segmentation. In customer segmentation, we will try to group customer based on their spending patterns and purchase behaviors and such kind of things. So this, this is what we are going to achieve in this today's video. So let's uh, know about our problem statement. Consider there is a very famous mall and you are very experienced data scientist. This mall wants to get insights about their customer and they have their customer data regarding their approaches, behavior and other aspects. As a data scientist, you can build a system that can cluster customer into different groups. One group of customer may represent those that tend to purchase more in that mall and some other group may represent customer that don't purchase uh, that much in that mall. Having this group of customer will give us better insight that help, mo help malls to make better decision, better marketing and uh, making better strategies and such kind of things. This is the problem statement. This is a clustering a machine learning problem. Clustering comes under unsupervised machine learning. So let's uh, know about our workflow. So first we need this small customer data to train our machine learning model. Once we have this data, we need to process the data. We cannot feed this data directly to our machine learning model. We need to select few features which we need. Then we need to analyze the data to see which features are important for us. After that, we need to choose the correct number of clusters. So uh, we, uh, we will uh, choose the, how we will know about the correct number of cl uh, cluster by using this uh, WCSS formula. Uh, WCSS is a summation of XI minus YI the whole square. Uh, that is, that will give us the optimum number of cluster. We need to tell our machine learning model that I want uh, like three or five cluster, this many group of customers. So three or five clusters of, um, 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 of groups of customers. So we find a number of uh, method called within cluster summation of square that is WCSS. Uh, so it tells us the correct number of cluster that is suitable for this particular data set. Once we have this number of cluster, we uh, can uh, feed the data to our K-min clustering algorithm. So uh, once you feed uh, the data into the machine learning model, it groups the data based on the similarity in the data set. After that, we can visualize the cluster by putting this data. This is the workflow we are going to follow. Now let's move on to the coding part. So we will be coding in Google Colab. So uh, first we will uh, upload a data set in, uh, in this Google Colab. So just click on this folder and uh, right click and click on upload. The data set link I will provide in my description box. Uh, kindly download it and upload here. So first uh, we will start by importing the de dependencies. So these are nothing but the library and function which we will be using uh, for this project. So let's start. import numpy as np import pandas as pd import matplotlib.pipe dot import c bond at SNS from SKLN dot cluster import K means K means. 
so numpy is useful for making numpy array and pandas is useful for making data frames that is like a structured table for beta processing and uh, matplotlib and seaborn are used for making plots and k means our is our uh, machine learning algorithm so let's start by loading the um, data frame uh, from csv file to pandas data frame so customer data equal to ed dot read csv so click on this link uh, folder link click on this uh, three dots and copy the path and paste it here So now our uh, data set ha uh, has been uh, loaded to our pandas data frame. So let's check the first five rows of the data frame. Customer data dot head. So we can see the first five um, rows in the data frame. So uh, customer ID, gender, age, annual income, and the spending score. So let's uh, check the number of rows and columns. So customer data dot shape. So there are 200 data points and five columns. And uh, let's get some more information about the data set. Customer dot info. So you can see in the information about the data set, the gender column is a categorical column, rest are almost the numerical column. So let's check for the is there any missing values or not? So we'll take our data set dot is null. dot sum so you can see that all five columns um, and we we don't have any uh, missing values so we will only use annual income and spending score um, so for our model training purposes so uh, let's choose the annual income column and the spending score column so x customer data dot ILOC three comma four dot values. So we are uh, doing slicing here that three comma four like uh, it's uh, the three and fourth columns. So indexing start from zero. So zero, one, two, three, and four. So three comma four. Uh, and uh, let's run it. We'll take the values of it. So let's print it and see what it, what uh, what our x value contain. So this process is uh, known as slicing and uh, you can see the values of X. So uh, we are taking customer data. We are lo uh, lo locating particular columns. We are locating particular columns that is three and four as uh, index uh, indexing uh, from Python starts from zero. So index of annual income is uh, like um, three and uh, spending uh, score is four. So now uh, let's uh, choose the number of clusters. So that we will be uh, do doing by using WCSS that is within a cluster sum of square. So uh, it's a parameter. Uh, so it, uh, it tends to find distance between each data point and their centroid of their cluster. 
So for a good cluster, data points should be as close to the centroid cluster. So let's start finding the WCSS value for different number of cluster. So WCSS. So for I in a range one comma eleven. K means equal to K means and cluster equal to I in it equal to so we will take a the k means value k means plus plus a random state equal to uh, let's take any random value so let's take 42 only and uh, then we'll fit our model k means dot fit we will fit our x value so now uh, we will calculate a wcss WCSS dot append RK means dot inertia. So let's run it and I will explain. Okay. K min plus plus. So like uh, this range is taken from uh, uh, values from one to 10 and K means inertia will give us uh, the WCSS value for each cluster. Uh, and uh, this value will be stored in our WCSS list. So in first case, uh, when, uh, when the for loop is running, uh, this I will take the first value that is one. So uh, I'm splitting the data as only one cluster or only one group and it will fill, uh, fit this uh, data and it will find a WCSS value and put that value in WCSS list. Once for loop is completed, it will again carry out this loop again. So uh, now we'll pl uh, plot an elbow graph. So uh, this uh, like elbow graph generally shows which number of cluster has minimum WCSS value. So let's plot the elbow graph. the elbow point mm. 
graph. So we'll plot the X label. X label will contain the number of uh, cluster. And we'll plot the Y label. It contains WCSS. And PLT dot show. So SNS dot set. Uh, this uh, will basically uh, give theme and parameter required for our graph. So like an elbow graph uh, shows with uh, which number of cluster has minimum uh, WCSS value. So let's run it. Uh, okay, plt dot plot. So you can see the uh, the elbow point graph. So um, WCSS uh, this graph will show the minimum WCSS value. So you can see that this is the uh, cutoff point here. So this this and this are the two cutoff point. So two elbow point. Like uh, after five, um, there is no significant, after five days, no significant drop. So the correct optimum number of cluster we can choose is five. So optimum number of cluster in this case is around five. So let's start uh, training the k-means uh, clustering model. And cluster equal to let's say uh, our optimum value is five, so we will take it as five. So then again, we can see we can uh, also see the suggestion it's uh, showing in the uh, yeah, Jupyter uh, notebook. So it's n cluster fit in in it uh, in it equal to. K means so we'll copy this. K means and uh, give our random state. as uh, let's say zero. So now uh, now uh, we will return, uh, look for, uh, we'll return a label for each data point based on their cluster. So y equal to k means dot fit predict Print y so you can see the values of y it's predicting so five and there are five clusters like one zero one two three and uh, four so visualizing all the cluster uh, let's start plotting all the clusters and their uh, and their centroids so plt dot figure fix size equal to let's say eight comma eight. So I have it's not required. So generally, uh, this uh, statement gives the size of the plot. So let's plot a scatter plot. So we'll write plt dot scatter.
we will plug past a value on the x value and the y value so the coordinates we will pass As equal to fifty. C equal to the green, and we'll pass a label equal to cluster one. So it's for the cluster one. And uh, the same thing we will do for five cluster. You can see, and there are five cluster here. So let's take it for five cluster. Let's copy it. So zero zero, then one zero, two zero, three zero, four zero, zero one, one one, two one. E one, four one. So it's green. Let's take different value. Uh, let it be red. Uh, we will take a uh, yellow. Let's take violet. We violet. Then here, let's take blue. So what this is basically means that uh, uh, this uh, y equal to zero is our x coordinate and uh, this one uh, is our y coordinate. So generally we, we are uh, calculating the center point or repair tension point of each cluster. So this is the size of the class and uh, this this zero uh, and this zero represents the cluster number. And this zero is the first column of X, that is the annual income. And uh, similarly, this zero uh, represents the X axis of the cent centroid. And uh, this one, uh, like, sorry, uh, this represents the cluster number, this zero represents the cluster number. And, a sec and uh, this one represents the second column of X. So basically, uh, the first, uh, first of each uh, represent the cluster number and uh, zero this uh, the subsequent of it in represents the first column of x and here it represents the second column of x and s equal to 50 is the size of the dots um, uh, which will be plotted in the um, like uh, in our scatter plot so here the second column is the spending score the, so the first column uh, is our annual income and the second column is the spending score so Now we'll plot the centroid. So PLT dot scatter. So K means dot cluster. Center. So we'll do K means
Now S size will be, let's say, 100. Here, we have to give it a C. Um, let's take it as CN. And we'll give it label equal to centroids. So we'll plot it plt dot title. Customer group. Lt dot x label. Annual income. Lt dot y label. our spending score. Priority dot show. So basically uh, here, um, this uh, cluster, um, cluster and dot center uh, underscore centers represents our centroid values. And uh, here this zero uh, means, uh, and uh, it represents axis of value of the centroid. And, uh, uh, and this represents the y value of the centroid. This one represents the y value, y axis uh, value of the centroid. So, let's run it. So, like, we can see that each clusters have their own centroid. These centroids are the representational point or the midpoint of each cluster. So, we have multiple cluster. All these cluster are partition in a good way. So uh, we don't have a very high or annual income, but they have very good spending score. So for this, uh, you can see that it doesn't have very high annual income, but uh, it has a fairly good spending score. So uh, compared in, uh, in this, in this um, cluster, so it has a less annual income and less spending score. So you can see and this like this one this kind of people like malls can uh, uh, can offer uh, this kind of people uh, like they can uh, give uh, offer to these people as they have less annual income and less spending score so they can give uh, some offer to this kind of people and uh, so just to need to know the centroid should be plotted first and uh, then the data point will be plotted um, so and it will be checked uh, that which centroid is uh, closer to the data point and then it will be rearranged. This means, and this k-means clustering model will reiterate and that is uh, do, um, do this again and again to find cluster and data points um, to, and the data points with, uh, to which it belongs to. After that, we can have different clusters. So, this is how uh, clustering uh, customer segmentation will is uh, done by using the k-means, and uh, so you can see uh, all we have a um, wide variety of clusters, like our uh, five clusters. So each are uh, separated uh, individually. Like uh, uh, we can clearly find the separation of all the groups. So and uh, most importantly, uh, don't forget to calculate the centroid. And uh, yes, uh, that's it from my side. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you.